Welcome everyone to worship. We are today going to be hearing scripture from Romans that talks about baptism. Uh, so I'm here next to the baptismal font. There's this idea that through the waters of baptism, we regain a new life, a new self because of Jesus' death, resurrection. And as we listen to the words of scripture today, as we think about our own faith journey, I encourage you to understand that baptism is not just a moment in time, but baptism is meant to be a way of life, a way of life that says that we are loved and forgiven and that we receive new life through Christ, not just way back when we were baptized, but every moment of our lives. Let us think about our baptisms as we sing our hymn about baptism. May we stand together. Please join me in the call to worship. Nothing compares to you, O Lord. In awe and wonder we gaze at your creation. The depths of my soul shout joy for your redeeming love. With each new day you pour your love over us. Come, Lord, inspire us with your power and presence. Be with, be with us, us as, as we, we prepare, prepare to, to be your, your disciples. disciples. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, are there any announcements? Good morning. Uh, next week, we start our 10 a.m. I panicked this morning thinking, what's the date today? So next week is the, starts the 10 a.m. service. And also, we're going to do the Women's Guild pool party. Anybody, uh, ladies, you're welcome to come. Um, it's at my house. And if you need any details, just let me know. And that's Wednesday the 5th at 6 p.m. It's a potluck dinner. And to continue with the Women's Guild, uh, we decided to do a little donation drive this summer, so we're collecting donations for the Gloucester County Animal Shelter. So I have a few of these flyers that I'll put around the church, I'll put some in the back. Um, some things are new things, but also 
if you're cleaning out um, newspapers, old towels, blankets, maybe a comforter you're trying to get rid of, we'll take that and donate that to the Gloucester County Animal Shelter. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Yes. There is, I believe, Tuesday, there is a blood drive. For uh, any that are able to come, uh, sometimes they fill up, so uh, contact the Red Cross. There's a 1-800 number, or you can go online and um, make uh, an appointment to be able to come. Um, our church has actually, in the past, had a pretty good track record, and if you are a person that is able to give blood, and if you are in the right time frame to be able to give blood, uh, please consider this Tuesday. I also want to welcome all the folks that are worshiping online. Uh, it's great to know that the community of faith is not just the folks physically present, but the community of faith also has a number of people watching, either live streaming or recorded at a later time. Uh, remember that you, too, are part of this community, this family. At this time, I would ask that we take a deep breath in. We let it out. We slow our thoughts. We slow our heart rate. Seeking to reconnect. Seeking the divine presence that is surrounding us and within us. Let us take another deep breath in. Let it out. We come to be refreshed. We come to be rejuvenated. We come bowing our hearts and souls before God, remembering that as we give ourselves to God, we gain so much more. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we try to follow your word, to put others above ourselves, to remember that we are all bound together as your beloved children, but our lesser selves to get the better of us. Forgive us when we give in to jealousy, vindictiveness, callousness, and indifference. In your mercy, Renew us in the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to focus on your love so that we may live for you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us continue as we offer our silent confessions to our God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we dare to offer confessions to God, not in order to feel guilty, but quite the opposite, to acknowledge what it means to be human, each one of us, not living up to what we know we wish we could, but even more importantly, acknowledging that God forgives. 
Through Christ Jesus, there is a love that has poured over us, not just once, but countless times. And that forgiveness that comes through Christ continues to pour over us this day. Know that through Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Let's stand and sing. The first scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 86, verses 1 through 10, and then verses 16 and 17. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding and steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your self-serving maid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear now the word of God as it comes from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. This is the Apostle Paul who is writing not just to the people who live in Rome, but it's a letter that is written so that all Christians uh, throughout the lands would be able to receive it and get kind of a general overview of what does it mean to be Christians and experience Christ, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him in baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed 
and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make, your, to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have wounded any soul today If I have caused one foot to go astray If I have walked in my own willful way Dear Lord, forgive If I If I have turned aside from want or pain, lest I myself shall suffer through the strain, dear Lord, forgive. If I have been perverse or hard or cold, if I have longed for shelter in thy fold, when thou hast given me some fort to hold, dear Lord, forgive. Forgive sins I have confessed to thee. Forgive the secret sins I do not see. Oh, guide me, love me, and my keeper be. Let us pray. God, open our hearts to accept your word in ways that gives us new hope, new life. Allow for the words we hear today. Touch our hearts to follow you more deeply. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Paul's letter moves through different areas of focus of the Christian life. Last week we talked about justification, talked about being justified, and it had more to do with who Jesus is, was, and will always be, and a lot less about who we are. And today, uh, Paul is trying to help us look at baptism 
and think about how it impacts our life more deeply and more fully. In the scripture that we heard just now, he says this. He says, all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Uh, that's a lot of words. What does that mean? Well, here's a little diagram. Uh, we typically baptize over here with uh, infants or young children. Uh, since I've been here 13 years, I have baptized approximately 40 people. And it's always a joy. And when we baptize an infant, oftentimes we think about Christ being in them, the Holy Spirit poured over them. We don't always think about it as death and resurrection. But that's exactly what Paul is saying to us right here. He is saying that uh, the sacrament, the sacred moment of baptism is meant for us to rethink the whole thing. Christ died. Christ was buried. Christ rose from the dead. That baptism is supposed to be an acknowledgement of the truth that Christ has died for me. And as I'm being baptized, the sinful nature of my soul is washed away. And when I come up out of the baptism, I have a new life. The Holy Spirit is what controls me moving forward. That is a truth that doesn't always show itself in the world. Many of us, because we're Presbyterian or Catholic backgrounds, were baptized as infants, so we didn't even make a choice. It happened. But it was meant to be a sign that it happened not just in the moment of baptism. It happened 2,000 years ago when Christ died. Christ rose from the dead. We are meant to hear Paul point out a truth that is not easy to understand. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a word, at least words that mean basically the same thing, death, die, died, dead. We only read three paragraphs. And in those three paragraphs, those words happened 13 times. It's because Paul was trying to encourage people to understand you're already dead to sin. It's over. You don't have to sin anymore because the new life of Christ is in you. Celebrate. Acknowledge, let go, let go of sin, hold on to God. Now, when the people of that generation first became Christians, I imagine that something like this happened. Uh, they join the church, they feel a deep sense of relief that they are loved by God, they are loved by one another, and unlike the other ways that people worshiped multiple gods, constantly worrying about if this God is mad at me or this God is mad at me, I know there's one God that already loves me, already forgives me. And I imagine that was a, that was a load off of their hearts and minds. At the same time, they were told that soon and very soon, we are going to see the Lord. There's going to be a second coming, so get ready. The first year, they probably were able to go to church on a regular basis and be excited and acknowledge the baptism of new life and follow Jesus. But by the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year, the tenth year, where's Jesus? I, I can live this new life, but these old patterns keep coming back. And so Paul is gently reminding, death, death, die, die, death, death, die. <laughs> what fun words to hear. We are dead to sin, alive in Christ. 
Now, what does that look like? And how do we accomplish it? Here, how do we make the spirit of truth, of death to sin, and alive in Christ a reality in our own lives? Well, uh, I'm a pastor who's brought this up more than once, and if you've gone to other churches, you've met other pastors that tell you the same thing over and over again. There's the reading of scripture, there is the praying, there is coming to hear worship and be worshiped together, not just hear it from me, not just hear it over here, but as we talk amongst ourselves, as we welcome each other, as we care about each other, the worship is the ongoing relationship that we have with God and with each other, and it's wonderful. But I oftentimes forget to point out um, we have a new purpose. We have new purposes. If our focus is on sin and whether or not we sin, it's going to be what we think about. And it's going to be something that we see over and over again because we're focused on it. But what would happen if we put more of our attention on what is God's purposes for my life? How, as being a Christian and having the Holy Spirit move me in the world, if I, if I think, what is God calling me to do? Then I've got a focus. I've got a job to do. I've got this sense of, uh, I need to be a part of something. And the worry, the anxiety, the feeling that life isn't fair, woe is me, they get pushed to the side because what we begin to see is we are called to be Christ on earth and we are needed to bring Christ into the world, to be a part of the salvation of the world. That is powerful. So hope-filled resistance is resistance away from sin, but it's, it's also a hope that says we are called to do and be so much more together. Here is Josue Pierre. He lives in Haiti. His mother was 17 when he was born. He didn't have a father. Life was a struggle. He was taught that education is important, and in Haiti, education is free. If you can afford a uniform, if you can afford textbooks, if you can afford the, the paper, the pencils, it's free. Oh, and by the way, uh, it's free, but you have to pay $10 a month for various fees. <laughs> $10 a month in Haiti is an incredibly large amount of money. And so he couldn't. And then there was this group called Haiti Education and Leadership Program. His mother signed the papers and they said, we will pay for his education if he promises when he graduates to be able to pay it forward. So whatever tuition costs we pay for now, he will pay for somebody else upon graduation. Now, he saw a lot of his friends do one of two things. Uh, leave Haiti if they had any money at all. Escape to America. Because that's where hope lies. Haiti is hopeless. Or hopelessness sat so heavy on the souls of other friends that they became addicted to glue, uh, a form of drug. Or they would panhandle or they would steal in order to get their next meal. The world was so hopeless that we don't need to follow any rules. The only rule is worry about ourselves. And Josue, he thought that what God was calling him to do was follow the path. Follow the path of making a difference in his life and in the world. When he graduated, he didn't move away. He said, I need to stay here as an example to others. My purpose, the way I get rid of sin in my life, is by being focused on saying, Haiti does have a future and it's positive because Christ in me is going to energize me to reach out and care for other people. He developed a little app for the phone that made it so that farmers 
who can't even have a computer but have a smartphone are able to send information to the marketplaces and to the delivery drivers to make sure that their food gets to market before it spoils. He figured if I have this and I give it to the farmers and help them understand how to use it, we can get them more money in their pockets. There can be more food for people in Haiti to eat. And I can get a couple dollars when it proves to be profitable for the farmers. I'm gonna pay it forward by paying tuition for another kid, and I'm gonna pay it forward by saying there is hope in this world if you resist. Resist the idea that it's hopeless. Resist the idea that I have to fall back on those same ways that I deal with stress and anxiety that aren't so helpful. Resist the idea of blaming other people for our problems. Resist sin. Hope in Christ. Um, here is a place I don't speak French, so I'm going to mutilate it. Les Chambons sur Lignon. Well, perfect. Uh, I, I remember Monty Python, and, and they spoke French a lot. It's a, a little city, and in the time of 1940 to 1945, it had roughly 4,000 people living in the village. They were what's called Huguenots. Uh, they were a form of Protestantism that came out of France, and they believed very deeply in scripture, in worship, in sharing God's love with each other and with the world around them. Um, they were a part of the French resistance. It's interesting because France is a fairly secular country, and they get uncomfortable with religion, and yet um, the people of Israel, when they were thinking about who made a difference in our lives during World War II, focused on this town, even though the French resistance didn't acknowledge. Turned out, the population of 4,000 people in the four years of the occupation um, had 4,000 people who were Jewish go through their neighborhood. Some of those people were there for a few weeks. Some people stayed there the entire time. Not one Jewish person that entered that village was turned over to the Germans. And it had to do not with being a good French person, not standing up for justice for justice sake. It, it had to do with believing, believing in Jesus. Um, this came out of one of the sermons that one of the pastors uh, shared. The duty of Christians is to resist the violence brought on their consciences through the weapons of the Spirit. We will resist whenever our adversaries demand obedience contrary to the orders of the gospel. We will do so without fear, without pride, without hate. For the Christians in that little town, it wasn't that sin is only in me. Sin is all around us, injustices, oppressions. And we as Christians are called to be a beacon of light. We are called to resist the sin that exists in our own neighborhoods and in our own nation and rise above it, to be caring and loving to the people who are pushed to the margins, the people who are neglected, the people are abused. So Israel uh, gave a little plaque and a little stone that it was sat upon for this village to say, we see you. We see that you resisted sin, that you kept hope alive, not just for yourselves, but for all those Jewish people that weren't even your faith. And you did it through the love of Jesus. We thank you. That village, I imagine that individual sin happens no matter how godly we are, but there's a way to turn the volume down. 
And we turn the volume down, not just by doing the practices of religion, but by believing that we are meant for purposes of healing and transformation and hope and justice. And when we're busy focusing on those things, we have less time to muddle around in sin, to get stuck, because there's work to be done. Not overwhelming, over joyful. Let us discover in our own hearts that hope-filled resistance, not just to avoid sin, but to find a purpose that helps us leave sin behind. Because Jesus Christ is inside of you. You were baptized. His Spirit gives you hope, hope to resist sin, hope to find new life for yourself and others that need it desperately. Keith, are you ready for some singing? I'm ready for some singing. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for some singing? I think I'd like to have a little fun with this next song. Stand up if you would. I'm going to put on my music education hat for a minute. The song on the screen is written just as just a straight melody, but this is actually a song with repeats in the verse. Now, whenever I have said that this is a new song, people fuss, Jay, we already know this song. So I don't know if you know this song or not. This is a song that has been around for, gosh, I guess nearly 30 years already. I will call upon the Lord, and I'm going to employ a technique to teach it to you called lining, and I do some of that already in the hymns when basically you'll hear me sing a line and then you sing it back to me. Repeat after me. I will call upon the Lord, ready? I will call upon the Lord. The next line, who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. So the verse is going to be you repeat after me and then the chorus we sing together. We're going to do this twice. Betsy, I think we should be good not to have to call any audibles. I sing. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be sounds like this. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I'm going to try to cue you because the repeats come a little bit sooner than we practiced them. Let's try this one again. One, two, three, sing. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth. The Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock and let the God salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Can we sing that once more? Yeah. Betsy, can you back up to I will call upon the Lord, please? You did so well, let's do it a third time. Ready, one, two, three, sing. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. I will call upon the Lord, the Lord liveth. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Thank you very much. 
see, see, ladies and gentlemen, you can learn new songs. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, please be seated. At this time, are there any joys or concerns that people would like to share? Yes, Shirley. Okay, Carmen has a bladder infection. We are praying for him. Carol? Yes, uh, we're, we're praying for Peter, who had to have emergency surgery. He's in the ICU praying for healing and uh, uh, making sure there's no infection. Um, that would cause more problems. Carol? So I left the school and now I'm working back at the morgue and I pray at the ICU. And I'd like to ask, I know it is, it is really as well as asking prayer during a young woman, a young girl there who was six years old, who was a smaller baby. She has been in the hospital for almost a month now. She developed um, cardiac myopathy at the beginning of her heart. Um, and she was stage one on Friday. <gasps> old is she? A six-year-old six girl who needed a heart transplant received it and we're praying for uh, the the time between now and uh, her going home would be quick and easy so that, it, that she'll be able to take the heart and we also uh, pray for the family who had to grieve the loss of their own child who gave the heart. Um, other? Yes, Jesse. Next, we're praying for uh, Jessica's parents who, yes, Jeff and Claire. Thank you, Jeff and Claire. As uh, so many folks uh, in their later stage of life have all sorts of complications and pray for God's presence, healing, and hope. Yes. Uh, Greg Hawk is at Lady of Lords. He had a second stroke um, and pray especially for his wife as well, uh, Lynn, uh, who has been beside herself. Um, he's been struggling with dementia for a while in part because of the stroke originally. And um, again, pray for a sense of God's presence with him. We're not sure what to expect at this time but especially for comfort, support, strength for Lynn. Carol. Pray for all caregivers, especially caregivers uh, who are hired and enter our families and homes, but also caregivers who are children or spouses or even parents sometimes. It can be um, a daunting uh, life day in and day out to have to do the support and the care necessary for our loved ones so pastor keith yes thanksgiving for you are getting home safely and prayers for you as you go out again yes thank you that reminds me my joy and concern is that last week i was at a presbyterian conference that was amazing i felt rejuvenated in faith got some ideas about worship um, i am wearing uh, a stole that was made by karen berry um, this decoration in the middle is a Mayan blouse from Guatemala. Uh, I'm going to Mexico and we're going to the part where uh, the Mayan traditions are still kept in certain places. So uh, I'm wearing this in part excited to go to Mexico tomorrow. I'll be there for a week. I come back for a few days and then uh, my family goes to the Poconos. And so I will be in, out, in, out. Um, 
Are they taking you with them to the Poconos? Yeah, I get to go with my family to the Poconos. Yes. Because you said you'd come back for a few days, and you said, my, then my family's going to this. Like, are they going without you? Yeah, no, no. The, I get to go. It's just Tracy and I going to Mexico. Um, not the whole family, but it's the whole family. It's, it's exciting. Poconos is a fun time. Um, there was, there, because of that, there will be no Bible study. Um, and then the following Tuesday is uh, the 4th of July, so there will be none this Tuesday or the following Tuesday, and then uh, the following Tuesday after that we will start. And we are watching The Chosen. We are on season two, episode something, three maybe, four, I can't remember. So it is an incredible series going through the life of Jesus and the disciples. And um, they do a wonderful job of adding depth of character without uh, handling the stories inappropriately. Like they don't throw a whole bunch of agendas. They just try to help us understand what these folks that met Jesus must have been thinking and going through, and it's beautiful. Um, if you want to join us, Tuesdays at 1030 in a couple of weeks. Um, I am amazed. Uh, every time that we have worship uh, times change or get close to changing, we always have people showing up at uh, the time they thought instead of the time that we had. It. So at 10 o'clock this morning, I opened the doors waiting to see two or three people come. Not one person came at 10 o'clock. At least none of you came into the doors. Congratulations. It, it, our, it is very confusing to try to figure out when do we start coming at 10? When are we going back to 11? And we've, uh, I want to thank Linda because she had that on Facebook over and over again. She put it in the emails. You guys read your emails. Congratulations. You uh, looked at the newsletter and you looked at Facebook and you all came at 11. Way to go. Yes. Uh, his name? We are praying for Sal, who is 92, and a vet of the Korean War, and uh, he has bladder cancer. So keep him in your prayers and his family. At this time, let us come to the Lord. God, we give thanks that you bring us here to worship, to gain hope, to have strength, to be filled with resistance, uh, resisting sin, uh, resisting that sense of being overwhelmed. Remind us again and again that your spirit is already in us, already working for us, already helping us to produce fruits of love and service. We pray that you are with the people we have named. A lot of them have health issues, some of those health issues uh, may be terminal, and some of them will uh, turn around and people will be healthy again. We pray that you are with them all, giving them a sense of your love, a sense of miracles taking place, miracles of devotion and love, of intimacy with people we care about, also uh, miracles of modern science and healing. We pray for Greg. We pray for Carmen, pray for Peter, pray for uh, the baby who or the six-year-old who's in Nemours. Uh, we pray for Jeff and Claire. We pray for Sal. We pray for caregivers, both in our community and beyond. Help us all to see that your sacred power and presence are already in us. Give us the courage to rely on you and to lean on you. Give us the courage to be honest with people we trust to share our burdens so that we can feel a little more relief. Give us the ability to listen to people as they share burdens without trying to fix their problems, but being with them and caring about them. We pray for a world who is stretched thin with concerns, with violence, with hopelessness, 
whether it be Haiti or Camden, bring hope, bring life, and allow us to find our own purposes so that we can be a part of that light and life wherever we go. At this time, we join together in saying the prayer Christ taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Knowing the power of God is in us, let us give thanks through our tithes and offerings. stay. Let us pray. God, open our eyes to the gifts you constantly give. Allow us to see the miracles right before us. And we pray that these gifts we return would be a part of the miracle, a part of changing and transforming the world into your likeness and image. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Leads to victory 
Brothers and sisters, be filled with hope and encouraged to resist, resist sin, and to overcome sin with the love of God that is poured out, shared with you and all who believe. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.